Hi, my name is Hubbard and welcome to today's test of the brand new Acer Aspire 7. Now due to the lack of time I'm just making this a very quick and dirty review so please forgive me if I'm mumbling, stuttering, if I miss anything. Just ask any question that you have in the comments, I will try to answer as most of them as possible. Now this Aspire 7 that we have here is just a mere refresh from last year's version. To be specific it's the A715 75G and it does have a GTX 1650 Ti, so it's one of the first laptops with this brand new GPU, which is just kind of an update or a refresh of last year's 1650, and it's not comparable to the desktop version's um, 6050 Super. Furthermore, it does have a Intel i5 9300H with a maximum all-core turbo of 4 GHz as well as a 1TB SSD drive, which is an NVMS, NVMe SSD, a very fast one um, SSD drive with one up to 1.5GB in reading and writing, or even a bit more, which I tested when the drive was around 70% filled. It comes with only 8GB of DDR4 dual-channel RAM with a speed of 2666MHz, which is upgradable to up to 32GB. Unfortunately, this was one of the main cons I have for this laptop in this configuration. Well, the look and feel of this laptop are kind of mediocre. It's, it's not bad, it does not have any sharp edges, it feels, feels firm and sturdy. Um, display is not very bendable. It does not have a metal finish like last year's model, which I don't know why they stopped doing that. It does not look like anything special. To be honest, it does not look like a gamer laptop, it just looks like a regular office laptop without much thought for design, to be honest. But it does not look bad or anything. It just people might call it a bit boring, to be honest. But I don't know if that's important to you anyway. If I would need to sum this up in a positive way, I would say it has a subtle look. Yeah. Well, it does have a 50.6 inch IPS Full HD screen, which can be easily be opened with one hand only, if that's important to you. The screen has very, very good um, viewing angles, in my opinion, and I think it, the brightness is fine too. I didn't test it outside, to be fair, uh, in direct sunlight, so this still might be a problem for this laptop. It seems to come with the same chiclet um, keyboard, which uh, last year's version was using which is okay for me, but I had to get used to the small keys for a while to be able to write proper with this keyboard, but then it was just fine. Um, the same goes for the trackpad, seems to be the same one as last year, with one minor change. Now the fingerprint sensor is um, installed directly in the, in the mouse pad. The whole laptop weighs about 2.3 kilogram, which is pretty light in my opinion for a laptop this size, and it's pretty flat with around two centimeters of height and the maximum angle of the display goes like this. Now the GTX 1650 Ti which is installed in this machine is about 10% faster than last year's 1650. So um, if you are interested in more gaming benchmarks I will add a link in the description um, to a video where I compare it with the GTX 1050 so you can check out for yourself. But I can tell you up front that it's about as fast as a GTX 1060 mobile version, not the desktop version, which is still a bit faster. By the way, overclocking this GPU improved the performance by around 6 to 7%, being stable all the time. So I would kind of recommend to overclock this laptop because it's still staying at like 68 degrees on the GPU all the time. If you want to know how to do this, Please check my video on how to overclock your laptop over there. If you want to know, I was able to raise the core clock by around 100 MHz and the memory clock by around 400 MHz. Oh, and by the way, I undervolted the laptop's CPU to maintain the power target, because if I didn't do that, it was not able to keep its maximum all-core turbo of 4 GHz, because it would go down to like 3.4 MHz after a while, uh, 3.4 GHz after a while. So, undervolting it by 110 millivolt helped a lot to make the CPU stable and um, stay cooler at the same time. If you want to know how to undervolt your laptop, please also check my undervolting laptop video right over there. Oh, and by the way, there is no risk or harm in undervolting your laptop at all. It's just a safe thing to do if it works. 
If not, well, bad luck, but usually you can always on the wall a laptop by at least some degree and some millivolt to get some more performance or less heat out of it. Now speaking of the loudness of this laptop, it's um, very quiet in idle mode. If you do light stuff, you can still hear the fans, but they're very, very quiet. It's not disturbing uh, in any kind. But of course, under full load, the fans ran up quite a lot. It's close to disturbing. I don't like laptops this loud, but I've had louder laptops before. So it's not super terrible, but it's not great as well. But the good side is that the fans do a great job and keep the GPU at around 68 degrees, even overclocked, and uh, the CPU at a maximum um, temperature of around 80 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good for a laptop of this size. Now, according to Acer, the battery is supposed to last up to seven hours when doing light stuff, which I don't think it's true. Maybe a bit less than that. Playing on the full load with the battery, I tried Red Dead Redemption 2 and I got 40 minutes before the laptop shut down itself, so that's not a lot if that's an important thing to you. And you could of course enlarge this number by reducing the graphics, setting an FPS cap with MSI Afterburner or the included NVIDIA GeForce Experience options, so there's um, some headroom here. And loading the battery by around 70% took me about one hour. Now the speakers are very mediocre. They are quite clear, but of course flat. And since they are facing downwards at the front, they are kind of the sound is kind of related to the material of the table or uh, underground that you have. So keep that in mind. And the overall loudness was not very very loud. It was acceptable, but it could be louder in my opinion. Now for the connections of this laptop, we do have on the left side a LAN port, which I really dig. We do have an HDMI connection, a USB Type-C and two USB Type-A um, USB 3 connections, as well as a Kensington lock. And on the right side, we do have the power connection right in the middle, which I find kind of uh, not so very good. And another USB 2, which is mainly for your mouse, of course as well as a headphone jack. Now, would I recommend this laptop? Well, that depends on the price, I guess. In case of this laptop, I would always go out and look if I can find a GTX 1060 laptop with an i7 processor, which probably is as fast or faster, maybe as expensive or less expensive than this one, especially because this is just brand new. So prices may drop in a few weeks, so, or if you get a good deal. To be honest, there is nothing fancy about this laptop nothing special but it's not bad either it has all the stuff that you need for daily use except a SD card slot if that's a thing to you and as I said before the main con that I have with this laptop is that it has only 8 gigabytes of RAM so I would recommend you to swap that out to 16 gigabyte as soon as possible it is definitely offering a good gaming performance if you're okay with not always using the highest settings in your titles and please be aware that this special configuration that I have is not available everywhere uh, right now, so it might be a different version in, uh, in the country where you live or you might not be able to get it at all because there's so many variants of Acer laptops out these days. It's just kind of hard to always find the exact one that reviews give on YouTube. So maybe yours is a little bit different. Well, I would recommend to get this laptop if you don't have a laptop at all and you would like to have an entry-level gaming laptop for the first time or if you have an older one which has a GTX 1050 for example because um, the performance gain will be kind of noticeably, um, even for beginners, there will be a, um, a performance raise about 50 to 70 percent in most titles. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and um, subscribe. My name is Darkwing Duck. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and cheers.